Hey you folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to Let's Try Face Track No IR. So, uh, every time I put up a flight sim video, it's like, if I had a dollar for every person who told me I had to get Track IR, I'd be able to afford Track IR. Track IR is a uh, hardware and software product where it's got a little device that sits on top of your screen that um, uses infrared stuff to track your head movement, and you can tie that into these computer games, like flight simulators, to uh, track your head movement. Um, and it's like 150 bucks or something for the hardware. Now, it's, I think it's supposed to be very, very good. But someone pointed out to me recently that there's something called FaceTrack No IR, which is a free and I believe mostly open source solution that just uses your webcam. Um, so you can see it's sort of in effect here. Now, you'll notice, first of all, unintended head movement. Whoa, what's going on? I don't know. Um, there is a dead zone in the middle, which I configured. Mostly this is working out of the box. Um, I think out of the box the smoothing is set to one. I, I just pumped it up to two. The higher the smoothing, the more latency you'll have, uh, but it'll eliminate some of the shakies. But other than that, this is the default. That's the default. I set it to FSX Sim Connect, and it's working properly in Prepared or Prepare 3D, for example. Um, the big thing is this curves button where you go in here, and as you can see, as I'm going to turn my head to the left, actually, if I can do this, you can see. If I turn my head to the left, you can see the yaw curve start to kick in. Well, I went and put in like a little bit of a dead zone over there where it doesn't where it doesn't really do anything. And the reason I did that is uh, because by default, it's got none of these dead zones. And so any little movement that you put in with your head causes things to go kind of crazy. Um, I actually just tuned a, little, a few of them down a bit. And I think I'm going to go ahead and knock them up a little bit more. Just because I naturally have a fair bit of shake in my head. So um, I like it better to put in a dead zone like that. But uh, yeah, it can track you uh, your rotation, so it can do your pitch down, pitch up, it can do the yaw, and it can do head roll as well. Now, I have this turned quite low because it seemed a little a little excessive to me at first for this. Uh, you could use it for first-person shooters, for flying games, for driving games, all kinds of things. It also does the translation, so as I move forward or backwards, uh, left and right, right, oh. Lost my faith there for a second. I think I went off screen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Oh, and up and down. So you can check over the cowling and squat down a little to track the instruments. So And what you can do, yeah, you can center it. So what I like to do is I like to set a little bit higher, like this, sort of. Um, oh, save. I set kind of at attention. Then I hit the home hotkey to center the view. And then I kind of just squoosh down just a little bit. Because then it makes it just, with my settings, it makes it, so that if I'm looking straight, I can still see the speedometer, which is what I want to see all the time. And then if I look down, I can see that. So there's probably going to be a little bit of fine-tuning as is. You can change the hotkeys as well. Um, if I do, go and set it again. There we go. So let's go ahead and try a little bit of flying and see how it feels. Uh, I am at uh, Arlanda Airport, which is just... It's basically the Stockholm Airport in Sweden, just north of, uh, of Stockholm. So. When we take off, we're going to be going northeast, so we're going to be turning to the south. You can see if I do squat down a little, and it makes it a little bit easier to just track some of those instruments here. So let's go ahead and execute a right turn, head south. Yeah, I can look. Well, that's not a particularly useful view, but something like this is very useful. Track the horizon. Check back down to my instruments. So we're coming along with the south right now. Look there. Look down. And so there's a little bit of sticking to the middle because of those dead zones I have put in. Um, and I think that's going to be a great sort of, you know, personal preference kind of thing. I am at... This is not right. This is not Orlando. <laughs> I should be seeing Stockholm in the different distance. I think I, I didn't lo reload it right. I'm probably at Carlisle in uh, the UK. Hang on. If I go to uh, go to airport, it'll show me the closest airport. Yeah, I'm Carlisle in England. Never mind, sorry. I was doing some flights around um, uh, around Stockholm recently, but apparently when I reloaded it, I forgot that my settings were not quite right. So there we go. Anyway, the the fair English countryside. We can look over, look around. What I particularly like is looking left, and then I can sort of squat down and actually see out my window properly. Oh, let's not pitch up quite so much, and then I can see the wing compared to the horizon. And, uh, yeah, so there'll probably be some fine-tuning. But, again, other than messing around with the curves, nice little river, other than messing around with the curves, I am running with the out-of-the-box sort of setup. 
And if I'm actually trying to fly, like I'm trying to show off things here with like pretty extreme maneuvers, but when I'm actually just trying to fly, I was running some, uh, just some touch and go pattern stuff around the airport where I'd land, take off, look, uh, turn left, look out the left window, see the airport, make my left turn, continue to see the airport, check forward, check down, check up, check left. It felt very natural and very, very functional. So, um, oh, I forgot to, uh, I'm going to plug in my headphones over here. Did I? Nope, there it is. So I still think some of the curves are there. I, uh, I, I turned down some of the, uh, how far the curves can go. So I think that's about as low as I can pitch down right now. I might go and allow me to pitch down a little bit more or change where some of the, uh, the points are just to make it a little bit easier to run, run things. But yeah, a lot of personal preference stuff. The, uh, again, I have, you can see, I'm tilting my head way back here. And that's as far as it goes. And that's because I didn't see any point in this game to rock my head all the way back. But what's kind of cool is in here you can save different profiles. Um, so this is my profile I'm setting up for prepared 3D. In fact, I might specifically make this the uh, A2A C1782 prepared 3D profile, for example. But yeah, you can see, like, looking over there, looking over there, looking down. Doesn't take much of a movement. And again, you know, if I sit up a little bit more properly, I'm literally sitting higher up in the airplane. And then I go down, and I'm literally sitting lower down in the airplane. So again, the default, uh, the default settings are super sensitive. So you're like, you're looking around. It's like, yeah, I'm clearly doing that. But when you're trying to look forward or you're trying to read an instrument, it's like, because I don't know if you're like me, you're a little bit shaky. So, uh, but so very impressed with the product. Um, webcam better is better. Higher FPS is much better. There's a guide online actually to use a PlayStation Eye, which apparently records at 120 frames per second, uh, which might be the best. I don't know. Um, I have I have pretty good lighting set up in here because I do recordings and things, so more lighting is usually better. Um, sometimes your cameras will revolt, revert to a lower frames per second um, if you uh, if you have poor lighting, for example, or they'll get blurry, so it's not going to be able to lock on as well. But you can see, like I like this like face detection right here. It's kind of neat. I don't know. I have no idea how, how this works, but I'm very entertained. And apparently it is uh, mustache and beard compatible. So there you have it. And England. It's pretty. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to talk about. So yeah, I'll, I'll show my curves one more time if you want to see how I'm working. I, I'm sure there's going to be some fine tuning. So here, if I take the pitch, for example, and move it up. Now, if I rock my head back, I can look like straight up. And I think if I were playing like a... Um, an air combat game where you had like a clear glass cockpit or something like that, or just an open cockpit, like, you know, the old school World War One, World War Two sort of things. You definitely want this. So you could see anyone who's above you or more likely, oh, that's probably going to break my plane when you're going to one of these banks. So you can, you can see exactly where you're going, but that doesn't really apply to this plane. Actually, it's feeling pretty natural. And I think I want my pitch down to be a little bit more as well. So I don't have to move my head quite as much. I guess that's it. I like the dead zone, so it's not shaky, but once I start moving down, like, you know, let me look. Oh, that's that's quite good. That's really quite good, actually. I'm going to save these settings. Anyway, that is it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed. There'll be a link down below to where you can get Face Track No IR. Of course, I don't do tech support, but like I said, it just worked out of the box. Oh no, there's one other thing. Um, there's uh, they come with four different source trackers. Face API is, I believe, just the one you kind of sort of want to use, but it's not configurable in that you can't change your camera there. And I had a couple of virtual. Ooh, this one. A couple of virtual cameras set up on my computer, and it was trying to use one of those. Um, so I just had to sort of change the order of my cameras. Basically, I unplugged my webcam and plugged it back in, and then it properly picked up that webcam first. So if you have multiple virtual cameras, you might get weirdness that starts to happen. Um, other than that, I don't know. But yeah, other than that, the filter's the same. And my smoothing, I set it to two instead of one, but I may not need to do that. I don't know. The higher the smoothing, the more laggy it will be because it smooths it over the last X number of frames. So at 30 frames per second, if you put a smoothing of 30, it'll basically take a full second to process whatever move you're doing. Um, or it'll average it out over 30 seconds is what's going to happen. So you may or may not want that. And I like a little bit of roll just because it's, it's an interesting flavor, especially as I'm sort of going off here. When I'm looking at the side, I think that's when the roll is a bit more relevant. It feels a tiny bit more natural. But uh, generally speaking, it was weird. Like, if I go and find the curve, so we're just above 20 right now. If I go and set it to, like, where it was, which is more like here, and you sort of twist, it's like, well, I mean, I guess that's realistic, but... Actually, as long as there's a dead zone in here, it's not so bad. I might, 
keep this. Maybe, maybe bring it down a little bit. We'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching. And if you're into flight sims or driving games or maybe even some first-person shooters, I don't know. That might be a little weird. Um, consider giving this a try. Just need a webcam. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.